Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the... Hello, and welcome back to Frontline Rejects. Today we're going to be talking about the Trekker Light from Larson Made. And to be completely transparent up front, Larson Made is owned and operated by a single bladesmith who happens to be a close friend of mine. And the knife we're talking about today was given to me. I did not purchase it. So I do have a bit of a bias, but I'm going to do the best I can to remain objective in my review. Now we don't usually do reviews on this channel, but moving forward, we are going to be doing a select few on firearms and gear, which I feel really deserve to be mentioned. The Trekker Light is a dedicated hunting knife, which I carried this last season, and I'm really starting to love it. Later on, we'll be putting it through a very practical test, but before we get to the fun stuff, we of course got to go over the technical specs. The Trekker Light is 8.3 inches overall with a 3.75 inch blade and a 4.25 inch handle. This particular one has a red maple burled handle, a black leather sheath, and a fantastic satin finish. The knife is made out of AEBL steel alloy, which is also known as 13C26. It's a Swedish made steel, which has been on the scene since the 1960s and was originally used for razor blades. Due to the steel's alloying elements, it's corrosion resistant, tough, and easy to sharpen. Upon first picking this knife up, what I immediately notice is the weight. It is very light. Although dimensionally similar to my Benchmade Saddle Mountain Skinner, the Trekker Light weighs 3.8 ounces as compared to 4.4 ounces from the Benchmade. The grip is highly ergonomic and the knife sits very comfortably in my hand, while the handcrafted leather sheath rides very easily on my hip. It has a classically profiled drop point blade, and this prototype model doesn't include jimping on the back of the blade as compared to the Saddle Mountain Skinner. I was asked to carry this knife during the 2022 fall hunting season, which wasn't a hard ask as this is a quality made product and I've wanted to try it for a while. So the most practical hunting test for any hunting knife is processing game which allows me to do two things. First of which is to provide the craftsman behind this knife with constructive feedback, which will influence the design of the actual production model, as this is a prototype. And the second is to provide as honest a review for anyone who might be interested in purchasing these as I reasonably can. It's designed for hunting. It needs to be tested in a hunting scenario. Here in Washington state, we have our modern firearm deer season during the second half of October. And on opening weekend, I was out on the Olympic Peninsula chasing blacktails. The area I was hunting in had a lot of bear activity, so I figured I might have an opportunity on a black bear. And as luck would have it, I did. All right, guys, well, we got a beautiful black bear here that we just took out on the Olympic Peninsula about 30 minutes ago with a 130 grain Barnes TTSX out of a 30-06. Now we're gonna be fully processing this animal today with the Trekker Light from Larson Made. We'll get this bear gutted out, back to the truck, and then we'll see you in the shop to start skinning. The bear we're working on here is around 150 pound sow, and I know a lot of bear hunters prefer to take only large, older age class males, but I take a slightly different approach here in my home state. Here in the Evergreen State, our fall bear season typically runs from about August 1st to November 15th or so, which means we have about three and a half months to chase bears. During that period, we can use modern firearms in its entirety. And as a state resident, I pay $24 for a bear tag, not only for my first bear, but my second bear tag as well. So I can take two bears for the total tag price of $48. In contrast, one deer tag costs me $44.90 and I can only take one deer annually unless I win a lottery draw for a second tag. Our modern firearm deer season runs about two weeks long, so to put all that in perspective, I am allowed to take twice as many bears as I can deer and both bears will run me roughly the same price as one deer. I also have a bear season which for the same weapon class is seven times longer than my deer season. And the same general rules apply if you're an out-of-state hunter, with the only real difference being the price. Out-of-state hunters will pay $222 for a bear tag and $434 for a deer tag, so still about half the price to hunt bear versus deer. And if you live in a state that doesn't have great bear opportunity, consider coming here and taking one. Because the reason behind the generous season and cheap tag costs is the sheer numbers of our black bear population. Our black bear numbers are estimated to be between 25,000 to 30,000 bears, and according to one report, we are one of only five U.S. states to have a 
an estimated population on the high end of equal to or exceeding 30,000 black bears, and our black bear population is growing. Due to what most critics would describe as political pressure last year, Washington State got rid of its spring bear hunt, which had been a limited lottery draw hunt in between April to May, and so our bear population continues to climb. As it does, it's had a pretty significant impact on our deer and elk population. Black bears are omnivores and will primarily feed on vegetation, but they're opportunistic hunters and according to many estimates, account for more fawn deaths annually than the amount of deer that hunters take annually. They've also had a significant impact on the calf numbers among certain elk herds in the state. But it's hard to say exactly how much of an impact they've had on the elk, as the elk are also being ravaged by our rapidly growing mountain lion population. And what I'm getting at here is that to try and help out the deer and elk populations in the state, I tend to be a bit less choosy when it comes to selecting which bear I'm going to take. Plus, if you treat the meat right, it can be darn tasty stuff. If you look at hunter success rates for the state annually, depending on the BMU you're looking at, success is generally in between 4 to 10 percent, which is pretty low. But because deer and bear season, along with elk and bear season, overlap, and with how cheap bear tags are, which, side note, if you bundle the two together, they get even cheaper, a lot of deer or elk hunters will just buy a bear tag in case they happen to run into one. Those success statistics don't measure the success of hunters going out to intentionally look for bears. And with this bear, I fell into that category. It was opening week of modern firearm deer season, and I was out on the Olympic Peninsula hunting Colombian blacktail deer among some old timber clear cuts in the foothills south of the Olympic Mountains. I happened to run into this bear who was feeding in a huckleberry patch near a stagnant pond about 85 yards away, and the rest is history. Thankfully, I was only about three quarters of a mile or so from the road, so I was able to drag it out without needing to quarter it. All right, guys, we are back at the house now with the Larson made Trekker light and our beautiful black bear. We're gonna be getting this bear skinned and fully processed. Let's get started. I took this bear with my Tika T3X light in 30-06 using a 130 grain Barnes TTSX. The load I was running had a muzzle velocity slightly above 3,200 feet per second, and at 80 yards, we got a complete pass through, so I was unable to recover the projectile. This is my go-to bullet usually when I'm hunting with my OT6, and I think it's a fine choice for any large game in the lower 48. I'd had some concerns about potentially losing my grip on the Trekker Light's red maple handle when my hands got bloody during processing, but those concerns turned out to be unwarranted. My grip never budged, and the blade made quick work of the bear. Cutting through cartilage between the ribs was like slicing through butter with a hot knife, and the light weight of the blade, combined with the profile of the edge, made maneuvering it in tight areas a breeze. To say whether something is good or bad or is relative, and in the case of reviewing a product such as the Trekker Light, Light, that means we need to compare it to something similar. Earlier, we compared the Trekker Light to the Benchmade Saddle Mountain Skinner, which I think is a fantastic knife, and we will use that blade as our benchmark for the remainder of the video. Couple reasons for that. Both knives have a similar design, similar size, and similar intent behind their use. Mainly, they're both meant to be hunting knives, and as such, feature characteristics intended for that application. I also would consider the Benchmade to be sort of the high-end standard bearer for what you can expect of a mass-produced knife from a mainstream manufacturer. Now the biggest and perhaps most consequential difference between these two knives is the steel alloy used and how it's manipulated. As previously mentioned, the Trekker Lite uses AEBL and the Benchmade Saddle Mountain Skinner uses S30V. So what differences do these steels produce in the knife? Well, in the Saddle Mountain Skinner has higher edge retention characteristics due to vanadium carbides in the S30V steel, which mean that theoretically it will hold an edge better, so you'd have to sharpen it less. But the AEBL used in the Trekker Light is tougher due to the lower carbide volume and the finer grain structure in the steel. Quick note on carbides, they are part of steel's grain structure. They show up depending upon the elements in the steel, and they are a larger molecule, which are hard and good for edge retention. But since it creates a larger, a larger grain structure, the steel can be more prone to breaking where that carbide is. So the toughness is different because of carbides in the S30V and lack thereof of a in AEBL. This makes the Trekker light easier to sharpen, and it has a bit more forgiving of an edge to work with. So the Saddle Mountain Skinner stays sharper longer, but the Trekker Light is easier to sharpen. While being tougher, the AEBL is also slightly harder, or I should say that it can be heat treated to a higher hardness than the S30V. The Trekker Light is heat treated to around 61 HRC, while according to Benchmade's website, the Saddle Mountain Skinner is treated to 59 HRC. So how is the toughness relevant? 
Well, it significantly impacts how thin you can comfortably push the geometry of the edge. Behind the cutting edge on the Benchmade, the blade is significantly thicker, which is a necessity because the steel isn't as tough, which means it's potentially more prone to breaking. And anecdotally, I did actually break the tip off my Saddle Mountain Skinner, which you wouldn't know looking at it as I had the edge reprofiled. Now, because the AEBL is a tougher alloy, we're able to have a thinner BTE thickness or behind the edge, which means less material actually being less likely to chip or break. And less material means less weight, which hunters who are obsessed with weight savings will enjoy. As you may recall, when we weighed these earlier, the Trekker Light is a little over half an ounce lighter. And this thinner blade profile, again, anecdotally, seems to cut through meat a bit smoother. Now, a knife manufacturer's job when designing a blade is to pick a steel which is optimized for the intended use of that blade, and then maximize its potential through how it's treated in the manufacturing process. And a large-scale company like Benchmade may select a steel like S30V, which isn't as hard or as tough as AEBL, for a variety of reasons such as enhanced corrosion resistance or ease of manufacturing, both of which are pluses for the S30V. And if you remember back to what we had mentioned before, S30V also has better edger tension. So with the Saddle Mountain Skinner, Benchmade created a blade which is very high quality and has excellent value for money. But what they optimized it to be is a knife which retains its edge and has good corrosion resistance qualities while being a bit easier and cheaper to make, which is what you expect from a cost-focused corporate mindset. And the benefit of smaller knife manufacturers like Larson made is they focus more on creating the absolute best product they can rather than focusing on gross profit margin, which is why we end up with AEBL used in the Trekker Light, which creates a harder, tougher, lighter, and better cutting knife. Now, admittedly, it requires a bit more care than the Benchmade would. An end user will potentially have to sharpen it a tiny bit more frequently and perhaps clean it a bit more often to prevent corrosion. But this can also be avoided with proper knife care and maintenance. That said, the performance of your knife largely comes down to how you take care of it. Always make sure you wipe down your knife before storing it in its sheath, and you should inspect and hone your edge after each use. Despite that, having used both knives to process game, I feel like the Trekker Light has retained its edge and stayed sharper longer than the Benchmade. But that may just be because it came sharper in the first place. There are trade-offs in any choice you make, and when you purchase a knife such as the Trekker Light, you get one of the best representations of what a knife has the potential to be. Now, I'm not saying that the two knives cost the same. They don't. The Trekker Light does cost a few dollars more than the Saddle Mountain Skinner. But to help offset that a bit, for viewers of the channel, they are going to be running a promo code, which is FR10, and it will save you 10% off any purchase you should so choose to make over on larsonmade.com. They do have an awesome selection of cutlery products, everything from field knives to kitchen cutlery, and there will be a link to the website in the video's description. And I highly recommend going over there and taking a look around. His inventory goes fast, so if you're not seeing what you're looking for, sign up for his newsletter. Full disclosure again, the owner is a friend of mine, but we are not getting any money to do this video, and we will not be earning a commission or anything like that from sales. Let us know what your favorite hunting knife is down in the comments, and if you do decide to purchase some cutlery from Larson Made, or if you already own some, sound off with what your experience has been. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.